Lesson 4.3, Newton's third law of motion. Now, imagine you decide that you want to kick a ball. Here are you, and you kick this ball. The ball goes forward, right? What are the forces acting between you and the ball? Well, you're going to tell me, well, I exerted a force on the ball that way, right? But is that the only force acting here? And I'm going to tell you, no. There is also a force exerted by the ball on you. Which is why you feel a force in your leg when you kick something, or when you kick anything. You feel that force that pushes you kind of backwards. So the ball exerts a force on you, and you exert a force on the ball. Now, this is called an action-reaction pair action reaction pair you the red is the action where you kick the ball and the purple is the reaction now let's take a, another example here's some water and you are swimming you're swimming in this water and you use your hands to go forward right so what are the reaction pairs here so there are two there are two forces this is the force of your hand which pulls the water backwards and then the force of the water pushing you forward which is why you move forward you move forward because of the force exerted on the water that pushes you forward and not because you pushed your hand backwards. Same with walking. If I'm walking on a, a surface here and I decide that I want to move forward, the reason I move forward, it's not because my legs are pushing me backwards, but because the force of friction can push me forward. So if I go this way, the force of friction and I and I walk like towards this direction I'm gonna move my legs backwards and then my the force of friction pushes me forward and it makes sense because imagine I'm on ice this time imagine I'm some like very like slippery ice and I try to walk at the same I try to walk the same time I try to walk instead instead on ice you're gonna notice that the force of friction is a lot less so not only will I walk a lot slower but I'm also gonna walk, uh, and I'm also gonna exert a lot, a lot less of a force, right? Try walking on. If you try walking on ice, you're gonna realize that like the force you try to exert on the ice is is a lot harder to exert. It's a lot, it's a lot more slippery, and which causes you to go a lot more uh, slower than if you had a lot of uh, a frictionless, than you had if you had a, a more friction surface. Now, the final example, before we get to the next idea, is if you have a gun. So I have a gun here. I'm just going to draw a simple one. And imagine you decide that you want to trigger the trigger. What will happen if it's filled with a bullet? The bullet will shoot, and it will go that way. But you'll notice that in a lot of the times when you see a gun, you'll see that there's also a force backwards, right? There's gonna be like a recoil. You're gonna your hand is gonna move backwards when you shoot the gun, and the bullet goes forward. And this is the ex this is the perfect example, like the same as the all the other ones, of Newton's third law. This is all examples of Newton's third law. Newton's third law states that for every action, so for every action. There's an opposite, an opposite and equal reaction. So what this means is that when I exert a force on anything, like for example here triggering the bullet, going having it go forward, there's going to be a force that pushes my hand backwards. 
Now I have a question here. Why don't I go at the same speed as the bullet, right? There should be an opposite and equal reaction. So doesn't that mean that the magnitude of the force of the bullet should be equal and opposite to the magnitude of the force on my hand, right? So there's two forces here. The force on my hand, down by the red arrow. And then there's the force of the bullet. They are equal in magnitude. I'll try to draw them as equal as possible. So these are equal and they're just opposite in direction, right? One is going right, one is going left. This is the same exact example. But why does my hand go a lot slower and the bullet goes a lot faster, right? This will go maybe at 200 kilometers per hour. And my hand will only move per second and this one, my hand will only move like two to three centimeters backwards, right? Well, the answer to this is if you understood Newton's th second law, you'll understand that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So the acceleration of the object is equal to your force over the mass. Now, what happens when I increase the mass? The acceleration is going to decrease. And if I increase the force, the acceleration will increase. But if I decrease the force, the acceleration will decrease. But in this example here, my mass is a lot greater than the mass of the bullet, right? The bullet is a lot smaller than the gun. So by increasing the mass, I managed to decrease the acceleration, which is why I go a lot slower and the bullet goes a lot faster. This is an example of a Newton's third law and explaining why you move and why you, why you move uh, in this direction and why the bullet goes in that direction is using Newton's third law. And the relationship between the mass and acceleration and why the bullet goes faster and why you go slower is Newton's second law. So for the best example possible, I'm going to show you this. We have a cruise ship and we have a small boat. Now, let's say I'm on this boat and I want to leave and I want to get off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to exert a force on the boat, right? Backwards. And the boat is going to exert a force on me forward. Now you can see this in real life because like if you're on a small boat and you like try to go off of it, you're going to see that the boat goes backwards, right? The boat will move backwards and you're going to uh, accelerate and you're going to go forward. But how about when you're on a cruise ship, a ship that's so much bigger. Well, try moving or try getting off this boat. You're gonna notice that the boat is barely gonna move. You're, you're gonna not even, you're not even gonna notice it's gonna move. But in reality, you are exerting a force. Like if if I wanted to exit the boat, like the same exact way, you exert a force on the boat, and the board and the boat exerts the same equal and opposite force on you, and you get off the boat. But the boat doesn't move. It's the same equal and opposite force, yet the boat doesn't move, and that is exactly why. Newton's second law applies here because the mass of the boat is so the cruise ship is so much bigger than the mass of the small boat it won't move at all and the and the mass of the small boat is so similar somewhat similar to the mass of your mass so somewhat moves backwards but it's not the same here at all you're like maybe 50 or 60 kg and the cruise ship is maybe a thousand two thousand tons or even more. So the next idea we have is tension. Now say you have a rope and there is some kind of object attached to the bottom of this rope. Why are the forces acting in this scenario? Well you have the force of gravity which acts downwards pushing the object downwards because it's in the air. But you also have a force causing this object to not fall, which is the force of tension, the force of this rope. Now, the force of tension is equal to the force of gravity, only unless the force of gravity, uh, only unless the rope breaks. If the rope is broken, that means that the force of tension is a lot smaller and that gravity prevailed and will break the rope and pull it downwards. Now, if the rope doesn't break and it's uh, at rest like this, 
Then there is a few in interesting things you should know. One, you should know that the force of the tension, so we can do T is equal to the mass times gravity. This is important when we solve equations. Uh, you should also know that a uh, tension force uh, is not exactly similar to the normal force. It's more of a force exerted using and only using uh, ropes. It's important to keep that in mind. Now there is also tension force on horizontal planes. It doesn't have to be hanging. For example, when you pull blo a block, like let's say you have this box here, and you decide that you want to attach it to a rope, and you want to pull it. So if you decide to pull it like this, then there's going to be a force, uh, the force of you that way, and then there's also going to be a force of the tension rope over here against this. Maybe a tension force of the tension rope against the uh, pulling it, uh, pulling it towards the direction, and it's also going to be equal to the force of that you exert. So if I exert three hundred newtons, uh, the tension force will also exert three hundred newtons, similar to Newton's third law, which we just explained. So the final example we're going to explain is normal force. And now there are three cases, so three cases. Let's go over each one. It's important to note that in all cases, the objects, on all cases, they're at rest. Meaning that these boxes are not moving. So let's look here. I have the first box, what's the force that's acting on this box? Well, there's the force of gravity downwards they're all like on this table by the way force of gravity exerting on the table or downwards and then there's the normal force uh, we'll draw in green normal force counteracting this force of gravity and that's why these two forces are equal so the objects f net is zero it just stays the same it doesn't move now the second case I'm going to push down I'm going to exert some kind of force with my hand. Now, what does that do? Well, first let's draw the force of gravity. Same force. But this time I want to exert a force downwards. What will that do? That will add. It will also add a force equivalent or uh, on the same direction as gravity, right? So the normal force to keep this object in equilibrium, to keep this object in the same, in the same spot without moving, has to be a lot greater. So that we'll draw in green. The normal force is not going to be just equal to the gravity, but also equal, but also adding these two forces. It's going to be, so it's going to be greater like this. So it has the force of gravity, and it also has the force that I added. These two combined. Now the final example, I'm going to, for example, Add a string like this. On each corner and I'm going to pull it upwards. So I'm going to what? Exert a force upwards. This time it's counteracting gravity. And I'm going to draw the normal force. Now, is the normal force going to be greater or less? The normal force is going to be less. Why? Because this force over here is on the same side as the normal force. So it's going to somewhat help it. So the normal force is just going to be these two forces, uh, this force, it's a small force. And now why? Because this force is helping this force. So if we actually add the total number of forces, we can see that it's going to be equal to the gravity. So these two forces together are equal to this force of gravity, which is why the object doesn't move.
So, th so those are some three cases that may come uh, about normal force. So for the first example, we have a trailer truck, trailer tractor truck, and it's traveling down the road. So the mass of the trailer, so this is the trailer, this is the tractor. And it says that the mass of the trailer is four times the mass of the tractor. So we have 4m here, and then here you have m. Now it's asking, if the tractor accelerates forward, so there's a forward acceleration, the magnitude uh, of the force the trailer applies on the tractor is what? Is it A equal? B is it greater than? Is it C less than? So, the answer to this question is, first, let's try to draw a body diagram, a free body diagram. So, we have the force going forward, and then we have the force in between these two objects. So, we have a somewhat uh, similar force here. Then we have the force of friction backwards here, and then we have the force of acceleration forward which is equal to the force of friction. We'll draw here friction. Uh, so here between these two objects, we have the force that the trailer, uh, the trailer applies on the tractor and the force that the tractor applies on the trailer. And seeing as uh, why, the, why the forces are equal is because Newton's third law states that when you apply a force on an object, there should be an equal and opposite force on the object. So they are equal. So for this next question, we have a 5 kg block. So 5 kg block, and it rests on a horizontal table surface. Uh, Ahmed pulled the block by a force of 12 newtons upwards. So there's some kind of force that is 12 newtons upwards. Uh, and it wants to find the magnitude of the normal force supporting the force exerted by the table. So first off, Whenever there's something like this, we should draw the free body area. There's also the force of gravity. So Fg, which is equal to mass times gravity. So we can say that the force of gravity is five times 10, which is 50 Newtons. So 50 Newtons. Next up, we have uh, the force that we applied pulling this object upwards. But there's also a normal force since it's sitting on a table and that normal force is going to be and since the object is at rest it's important to note that the f net is going to be equal to zero so the forces on going towards this side should be equal to the forces on the opposite side because the f net is zero so if we have a normal force normal force has to be somewhat uh, equivalent so that these two arrows these two forces combined will be equal to this force. So this arrow isn't exactly the most accurate arrow. It should be a lot smaller than that, but it's okay. We'll make the normal force. So these two forces combined should be equal to this force. So we can say that the F net is equal to the force of the, the U applied, so 12. Now the side is positive, the side would be negative. And then we have uh, another force, which is unknown. We'll have that be the force of X. Then we have the negative force uh, of gravity downwards, so minus 50. Now if, we, if net is going to be zero, so it's going to be zero is equal to 12, minus 50 plus x and then we do 12 minus 50 it's going to be negative 38 plus x is equal to 0 and x is going to be equal to 38 newtons so we know that the force over here of this yellow normal force is going to be equal to 38 newtons upwards and these two combined together are going to be equal to 50. So for this next question, we have force, it's asking for the force of B. And we have given acceleration 12. And we also know that the this is a frictionless surface. So how do we calculate uh, the force of B? So first of all, let's label, we have FB here. 
that direction. And then we have the force of tension. We'll have it be a blue arrow. So whenever we draw the tensions of the same arrow, so this is like the same, uh, the same string. Uh, so we can just label them the same T1. This is also T1. So that means they're going to be equal, the tension on the entire string. So next up, uh, we can calculate this side first, or we can calculate this side. Uh, actually, we need the force of tension so that we have to do this side first. So we can do T1, we want to calculate T1, and we can do F net is equal to mass times acceleration. We have the acceleration and we have the mass, so we can easily calculate the tension. So the F net is actually just equal to tension, right? There's no other forces applying. So tension is equal to the mass, which is 4 kg, times the acceleration, which is 12. So the tension force is going to be equal to 48. So T1 is 48 newtons. Now knowing this, we can then calculate the next example. We want to find the force of B, and we can do the same exact thing. First, let's find what F net is. The F net is going to be equal to these two forces. And it's important to note that the force is going on the left to be negative, and the force is going to the right is going to be positive. So we're going to have FB minus the tension force. This, the, it's since, since it's going to be subtracted, it's, uh, it's subtracted because the force of tension is negative. And now, now that we know the F net, we can do F net is equal to MA. Simply substitute this here. And then we have every given, so we have all the given. So we have FB minus T1 going to be equal to the mass, which is 2 here, the acceleration, which is 12. We have T1 given. So FB is going to be equal to, we, it's not given, we, we calculated it, 48 equal to 24. And FB is going to be equal to plus 48, plus 48, going to be 72 newtons. So the force of B is 72 newtons. Next question. A rope of neg negligible mass supports a block that weighs 30 newtons, as shown below. The breaking strength of the rope is 54 newtons. So what does this mean? It means if it exceeds 55, 54 newtons, then the rope breaks. So that's important to notice. So what's called breaking strength. Strength, which is equal to 54 newtons. Now the largest acceleration, so what does this mean, large acceleration? The most acceleration you can give to the block by pulling up on it with, without the rope breaking is most nearly. So we need to exert a strength that won't exceed the 54 newtons of the breaking rope. Now how do we, how do we calculate it? Then we can simply use, uh, first let's draw the free body diagram. So we have FG downwards, then we have the tension force upwards. Tension force upwards is going to be equal to uh, the thing, the, the equal to the gravity because uh, it didn't break yet. Now, only when the tension force is greater than 54 newtons, it'll break. So, if we consider it 54 newtons, then that's the largest acceleration that we can get. So, F net is going to be equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration. So, the mass here is. This given it gave us it gave it to us in newtons. So to calculate the mass, we divided by ten. Going to be equal to three kgs. Now knowing this, we have the mass, we have the F net. We can we don't have the F net actually. We can simply calculate it using formula of F net with tension upwards. Now upwards is positive, downwards is negative, so. 3 tension minus Fg. Now we have the tension considered to be 
54 newtons. But we're not going to substitute here. We're going to take this and substitute it here. So we can say f net is equal to ma. And f net is considered t minus fg, which is equal to the mass times acceleration. So 3 multiplied by an unknown acceleration. T is 54 newtons. Why is it 54 newtons? Because if it's greater than 54, newt 54 newtons, it'll break. So we want to consider the largest force for the largest acceleration. So we can say that tension is 54 newtons minus the force of gravity, mass times gravity. So it's going to be 33 times 10, which is 30 newtons is equal to 3 times a. 54 minus 30 is going to be equal to 24. So right here, 24 is equal to 3a, dividing it by 3. The acceleration is going to be 8 meters per second squared. So what is this acceleration? This is the largest acceleration. You can give this block. If, for example, we gave it 54 newtons, if, if, if we consider the tension to be 55 newtons, then that would increase the acceleration and it would break. So 54 newtons is the most force we can give. We can have this rope uh, withstand and that's the answer to this question. So the next question, we have a string with masses five and two kgs on it, on its ends, and it's hung over a frictionless massless pulley. So this is pulley. Now it's asking, what is the approximate magnitude of the acceleration of the masses? So it wants to know What's the acceleration of the entire system? Now, let's say we solve this normally. So we're going to solve this. We're going to draw the free body diagrams. So we have friction upwards here, T1. And same string, so the same friction, T1. And then we have Fg downwards. Here. We have Fg downwards. So we have, we know this and we know this, right? So this is 20, 20 newtons is equal to 50 newtons. We don't have the acceleration and we don't have the forces of tension. So if we try to use the formula, F net is equal to mass times acceleration for any of these, we'll notice that we're missing acceleration and we're missing the forces. So how do we solve this question? We don't have enough given, but there is a trick, a trick to solving this type of question um, by simply doing one important thing. So what you can do is consider this entire system as one. What does that mean? We just add everything. We consider the system as one thing, as one body mass, meaning that the masses of m mass one plus mass two and it equals 7 kg. Now what else can we do here? We should know that we're not going to consider the external forces, uh, I mean in the internal forces. What is the internal forces? The forces inside the pulley. So the tension forces we're going to ignore and we're also going to ignore uh, this other tension force. Now we're only going to have the forces of gravity. Now how this trick works is going to be equal to the masses, so m1 plus m2 multiplied by the acceleration. Now we only need to find the F net and we have the F net, it's given, but there's also something important you should know. Uh, to understand which sides are, uh, which sides are positive and which forces are negative, we're not going to consider down negative and down, uh, down negative and up positive. We can't do that here. With this trick, and only with this trick, you have to consider what makes this pulley move. What does that mean? What makes this pulley go go down or up? So seeing that this is the greater greater mass, it's going to go this way, right? Uh, this is going to go up, and this is going to go down. So whatever, whatever makes this pulley go forward is going to be considered the positive, and whatever stops this pulley from going forward is going to be considered the negative. Now, because there's a 2 kg mass here that's uh, stopping this pulley from going uh, faster than 
faster than what it could go. Like if, for example, this was 1 kgs, then it would go faster. And if this was 5 kgs, then it would have a stalemate. So this pulley is sort of uh, fighting against this side going forward, right? So this pulley is going to be considered the negative. And only when you're using this case and this pulley and this side is going to be considered the positive. So now that we have we have just the two forces, right? We have the force of gravity on this side, the external force of gravity on this side. This side is positive, this side is negative. So we're going to consider F net to be equal to 50 minus 20. And to be equal to the masses of M1 and M2. So we can just write this whole thing in one formula. 20 is equal to M1, which is 2 plus 5 multiplied by the acceleration. So 30 is equal to 7 over A divided by 7. So the acceleration is going to be equal to 4.3 meters per second squared. That's our answer. So for the next part, we have part A here and part B. So part B, we have a string with masses 5 and 10, 5 kgs and 2 kgs. And it's the same question, but it's asking what's the magnitude of the tension in the string. So we can, it wants to know the tension of the strings, so both strings. So we can use either, either block to find the tension since we have the given for both of them. So uh, we'll do both. So we have F net is equal to MA and F net here is going to be, uh, we have to remember that we only consider what makes the, the pulley move uh, negative in the forces that make the pulley uh, stop moving negative and the forces that make the pulley move positive only when we're doing uh, we're adding the masses and we're uh, trying to calculate the acceleration in any other case we consider uh, po up to be po positive and down to be negative just normal normal way of doing it so keep that in mind same thing with acceleration the acceleration is going to when it's going down it's negative and when it's going up it's positive it's important to keep that in mind so when we do f net is equal to ma, we have the f net, which is t1. t1 is going to be positive because it's going up, and fg is going to be negative because it's downwards. It's equal to the mass, which is 2 kg, and then multiplied by the acceleration, which is, we, just, we just got it, it's going to be equal to 4.3. Now, Simply solving this, we have fg t1 minus 20, 2 times 10, equal to 8.6, plus 20 on both sides. t1 is going to be equal to 28.6 newtons. That's the tension of the string. Now, if you wanted, we could use the other side as well. Doing the exact same thing, f net is equal to ma with the T forces T1 minus FG and it's going to be equal to the mass which is 5 this time right mass is 5 so 5 and then the same acceleration which is 4.3 actually remember how we said the acceleration when it goes down it's negative so it's important to keep that in mind it's going to be negative 4.3 and not just 4.3 so T1, so T1 is going to be equal to minus 50, 5 times 10, equal to negative 21.4, around 21.4. And then you add 50 both sides. T1 is going to be equal to 28.6 newtons. So both ways give you the same answer. Three identical blocks, X, Y, and Z, hang from an identical strings so they're all in one string like this shown below which are the following free body diagrams so let's draw the free body diagrams uh could exit forces on block y so we'll just draw the free body diagram of y so y has obviously has the force of gravity downwards so fg but there's a lot more going on here actually so we'll draw it here fg downwards there's the tension forces upwards so t1 upwards and then there's also t2 downwards so if we draw the whole thing it's going to look like this so we have three forces t1 upwards t2 downwards and fg for the final question given that m6 and 4 kg is horizontal uh is sitting on a horizontal frictionless surface 
it wants to find the magnitude of the tension force in the string. So first of all, whenever we solve these questions, we want to find the three dotted diagrams. So we have tension upwards, so T1. And because it's the same string, uh, we also consider the tension force on this side, uh, uh, T1 as well. Uh, we also have the force of gravity downwards. So we can draw gravity with green, for example, Fg downwards. And here gravity is counteracted by the normal force. So it just cancels out. So we can ignore it. And that is the free body diagram. Now, if we were to solve this question normally, uh, we have the masses, but we don't have the acceleration. And F net, we have the forces, the forces of FG, but we do not have the forces of tension. So we're missing, we're missing two values. So we can't actually calculate it using this way. But there's a trick to this question where we consider the whole thing to be a system. So when we consider the whole thing to be a system, we consider the we only consider the external forces. So gravity, we consider gravity, and we consider uh, any external forces like friction, but it's not included here. Now, the external forces like tension and tensions inside the system, we just ignore them completely. So now we want to solve this question. We simply do F net is equal to ma, but we when we consider the whole thing as system, system we have to add all the masses, so six and four. So we'll do m1 plus m2 as a whole system. It's multiplied by the acceleration. Now the f net here is simply uh, all the external forces, since this force here is completely ignored. The only external force is going to be gravity on this block downwards. Now, how do we know when a force, especially in this case, when a force is negative? and a force is positive, whatever makes the system go, so whatever causes this, this system to move, so for example, this block going downwards is when the system moves, right? So whatever causes the system to move is going to be considered the positive forces, and whatever stops the system from going, so this block here is stopping the system from moving forward, it's going to be considered the negative force. Only when we're calculating this case only when we're doing the special case. So the F net is going to be equal to the gravity downwards, so Fg, and it's going to be equal to the masses added, so four plus six equals to the acceleration, which is unknown. So Fg is four times 10, equal to 10A. 40 is equal to 10. So the acceleration is going to be equal to 4 meters per second squared. That's acceleration of this block, of this whole system, sorry. And now when we want to calculate the tension, we can use either block. We can use this one or we can use this one to calculate tension. So we'll do both. So we do F net is equal to MA. And the forces acting on this block are the forces of tension and Fg. We completely ignore how we solve this method now. And now we just solve normally. So we have tension going upwards. This is a positive force. It's going up. So T1 minus Fg. Fg is going downwards. Equal to the mass, which is 4. And the acceleration, which is negative 4. Why is it negative 4? because the acceleration is going downwards. The block is accelerating downwards. Now we simply solve. T1 is minus 40 is equal to negative 16, plus 40, plus 40. And the tension force is equal to 24 Newtons. That's the first way we can do it. Now the second way, we can take the other block instead and do the exact same thing. It's equal to MA. What are the forces acting on this block? Since the only force is tension pulling it that way, uh, there's no friction and this is negligible. So we can consider the tension to be the only positive force. So tension is equal to the mass, which is six, multiplied by the acceleration, which is four meters per second squared. Now, is the acceleration here positive or negative? It's going to be positive because it's going to the right. 
and the tension force is going to be equal to 24 newtons. So the same answer, both gave us the same answer. And you can use either way. That'll be it for lesson 4.3, Newton's third law. If you have any questions or want to ask anything at all, you can ask it down below in the comment section or on the server. And yeah, good luck.